Hey y'all, it's Jo. Yo, yo, it's Jojo. Let's talk about hashtag season of the granny. I've got some yarn to give away for my 900 subby giveaway video. I have the winner to announce. So a couple of weeks ago, I hit um, 900 subscribers on my little, my wee little YouTube channel here. And those little milestones are always exciting, even though I know it really doesn't amount to much. Um, but I'm not trying to make it amount to anything. This is just fun, right? This is just fun, y'all. <laughs> um, but to recap, uh, what my, um, giveaway was for, I had three of these yarn B. Yarn B um, Dream Spuns. So I had three of those in there. I have two of these Shawl on a Balls. And I had, have two of these Shawl on a Balls with the Sparkle. And what else? I'm digging in this bag here. And two of these Cotton. Little sugar and cream cottons. I had two of those and one big sugar wheel cotton in the pink and grays. Oh, and I forgot to show y'all this is in the prize too. The Bella Coco um, custom made crochet hook. Exclusive to Bella Coco, Sarah Jane, Crochet Society, and the two little stitch markers. Really cute. I love her stuff. Let's run that, that, uh, that thingy, that random picker thingy. Yay. So congratulations, Mary. How exciting is that? And did y'all read her comment? She's from Louisiana. <laughs> She's one of my home girls, yo. Yo, yo. She's a tiger. She's a saint. So yeah, Mary, um, Give me a, um, a message, you know, via email, I guess, or however you want to get in touch with me and let me get your address and I will send this off to you. And um, I'd like to hear um, from you by, you know, a week. So seven days. So today's first. So by the 8th of February, I would love to hear from you. And if not, I will pick someone else. So congratulations. And thank you for um, joining me. It's really nice. Thanks. And thank you to all my dear sweet friends. Um, Y'all all hold a very special place in my heart. So I think some of you know that I've been like a granny square virgin. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never made a granny square. Although, when was it? A couple of months ago, I made a granny rectangle. So that's pretty close. And I'm talking about the traditional granny square, y'all. Um, so I'll just show y'all that real quick because I know I showed you already before that I made this big granny rectangle. It's like a lap blanket size, right? Very pretty, isn't it? Love those pretty. This will be great to like throw on the back of a chair for spring decor, right? Um, and this tutorial I got off of Margaret Olander. So I will link that down below in case you want to watch her explain how to do a granny rectangle. Y'all, if you've never watched a Margaret Olander tutorial, let me tell you something. She is thorough in her explanation where you understand every single part and piece you are doing. She is a retired teacher. She's not retired. I don't know. She doesn't teach anymore. But she, but she was a teacher, and you can definitely tell. She is amazing with her explana explanations. And she just recently did another tutorial of a hat that I really want to make. But we're just not hat weather people around here. Um, but I still might do it because I want to learn, you know, from her and how to do this hat. And I think it was called the bead stitch. She did the bead stitch in it. And um, 
what is so fantabulous about this video she did, the string thingy sticking out from my bracelet. What is so great about it is that she explains like uh, to do a hat from the brim up, okay? Which I usually like to do crown down because I know I can make my circle a certain width and then um, then I know it's wide enough and then I can just go straight down, right? Like a tube. But uh, brim up has always been kind of difficult for me because you don't really, um, I can't really concept, you know, grasp the concept of when to actually stop going straight up and to turn in, right? So it always ends up being too short or too long or too pointy or whatever. <laughs> but um, this tutorial is great because I watched, well, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched a good portion of it. And um, it's the brim where it's just the um, front post, back post, single crochets, you know what I'm talking about? So it kind of has that accordion effect. And um, let me, let me grab one real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, this type of brim on a hat. It is the back loop only single crochet. You do six, eight, ten, however many you want wide. And then you, um, you know, back loop only. So y'all know what I'm talking about. So to get the right length of that is not actually a measurement of stitches. It's an actual, how long is this? And how long does it need to be to fit around someone's head, depending on, on the size of the head, whether it's a child or a grown man, right? So um, she explains it so good as to how to find that right size and what you're looking for in any type of yarn, in your yarn, your hook, your gauge. She will help you figure it out, what exactly you're looking for. So yeah, she's really, really great. And I'm gonna link that tutorial down below too because I really wanna make that little hat because I wanna do the bead stitch. And where was I going with this? Oh, cause this was her um, tutorial also that I followed to do the rectangle granny. So it's season of the granny y'all, hashtag. She's another granny. Let me show you another granny. So I think most of y'all know that Glenda and with um, Creative Grandma and also Krista with Secret Yarnery um, put out a video, you know, just getting us all, you know, fired up over the granny, the granny stitch, the granny square, the granny anything, right? So um, I was like, Okay, so after all these years, four plus years, I've been crocheting now, never made a granny square. I'm gonna make a granny square because this is it. This is season of the granny, so you gotta do it, right? So um, within that next day or so, maybe two, Krista put out a video um, showing, because there's a lot of us out there that never made a granny square, especially if you're kind of new to crocheting. Like me, I consider myself still kind of new, you know? There's so much to learn. <laughs> I just can't get enough of it and soak it all in. But, um, so she put out a video um, and showed how to do a nice little, you know, regular basic granny square. And I'm like, okay, I got this. Get the yarn, get the hook, and we go to town, and I made a granny square. <laughs> so here's my granny square. It is, um, it's made with a cake yarn with, well, I guess you call it a cake yarn, Sugar Wheel Cotton by Yarn B. This is the color Milkshake, I believe it's called, Milkshake Madness. Don't ask me why it's called that because it's gray and pink. I guess pink could be strawberry milkshake, but why, why the gray? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I love these two colors together. You know, it's very, um, kind of chic looking, I think, pink and gray. So, um, I made my first granny square. Now, the thing that 
that bugs me that my friends say I have Joe CD because, you know, it's like OCD, but I'm Joe, so it's Joe CD. <laughs> um, when you're doing the color uh, changing yarns and you get that abrupt color change where it's like your eyes just like, shoop, it goes right there. It goes right there. It's like, this is missing some gray up in here. I can tell. <laughs> um, but it's actually, this isn't too bad. Not like, not like when I did that granny ripple that I've already ripped out. So maybe I'll insert a picture of that here where it had that bam color change right in the middle of a ripple. And I'm like, uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. No way. It's Jojo with the Joe CD. <laughs> So this is, um, and then I made it like a traditional size. I think like a six inch square. I think it's like a traditional size granny square. And that didn't look right to me because it ended like, you know, with a little bit of pink around this gray that was misshapen to me. It was misshapen. Although it was, it's not misshapen. It looks that way because of the yarn, the color change. Um, so I just continued it out and used almost, I mean, there wasn't but a few yards left. Um, there were some, like you see this, that had this light pink on the outside. And I just stopped at the gray. I didn't add, I didn't go into that other pink. So I stopped it on the grays. And that's 12 rows of granny square. 12 rounds. Would it be a round or a row? It's a round. <laughs> it's a square. <laughs> so yeah, so that's 12. And I, and I thought, well, I have plenty of this uh, sugar reel cotton up in here. So I will, um, I'll just keep making my 12 row squares and then maybe do something with that, which is also going to tie into, um, um, Debbie with the Canadian crotcheter doing her cow or make along or whatever it is challenge um, for um, her block party, Block Cow 2020. I think that's the name of it. I'll insert. Um, so, so all of our granny square stuff is going to go right along with, um, with uh, Debbie's block cow. So isn't that cool? So that's good. So that was a lot of fun. I actually, I love this yarn, y'all. It's so soft. Y'all know Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Um, basically the same thing as the Sugar Wheel cottons. The Sugar Wheel cotton yarn by Yarn B. So it's, it's soft. It's really nice cotton. So I started another one. I'm like, well, maybe I'll make a granny square blanket, you know, baby blanket or something. Because I have all this um, Karen cotton cakes and like this white and I have like um, lavender and a light blue. You know, I have like pastel -y colors and I'm like, well, that would make a really cute little baby blanket in um, granny squares in the cotton. So I thought that would be nice. I actually don't know if I'm going to continue on with this or not because I have way too many other patterns swirling around in my head I want to get to. But that might be something that I can do with this cotton, right? So I, that, that'll, that'll be there on the back burner, but it's still there. Um, One more. Karen with Happiness is Homemade is also helping Debbie, the Canadian crotcheter, with the Block Cal 2020. So I will link um, Debbie's video below explaining about it if you haven't already seen it, which I'm sure you have because she's wonderful and everybody loves her. <laughs> so that'll be fun too. Okay, to get back to that Granny Ripple that I showed y'all in my last video made with the Bernat um, Ombre, I was making it in the pink colors. I think it's called the burgundy colorway or something because one of the, the colorways is like a dark burgundy. Well, I ripped out that granny ripple because the color changes got to me too bad. And it's not like it's a lot of yarn where you can, you can color control and cut it and 
then you have a long section where you just got to toss basically. So, um, and also when I bought that pink colorway, I got two of these blue ones, but there was only one of the pink one. Well, the pink one didn't go far, but let me show you what I made with it. So, um, I, I went, well, let me just show you and then I'll tell you. So this is the granny circle. There's a granny circle. Um, it measures 26 inches. Yeah, so 26 inches um, across. And I got like 11 and a half. See that? 11 and a half rows or rounds. <laughs> Here we go again with the rows and rounds. Um, so, yeah, it's not big enough to do much with. And, um, so I went back to Joanne's the other day, just desperately digging around to try to find another one and they didn't have it. And, um, they're not online on Joanne's online, but, um, some friends told me we'll check out yarn inspirations, right? So I looked on there and they do have them. And then if y'all want to go check that out, they have all kinds of other colors, but you're not going to get the same good, you know, prices and deals like you do at Joann's. Like I got these for what, 40% off, you know, so $10, 40% off, you know, $6 a cake. And on Yarn Inspirations, I think they're like $10.99 plus shipping. Womp womp. So this is going on the back burner too until I can get at least one more cake to make that a decent little throw baby blanket whatever floor thing or whatever <laughs> whatever you want to do with it right whatever can be done with it <laughs> okay so sticking with the theme of the granny circle i was looking at some yarn that i bought from hobby lobby also a while back that i absolutely love and adore and um i thought wouldn't that make that granny circle is so pretty, right, y'all? It really is pretty, especially in the color-changing yarn. So I thought, wouldn't that make a beautiful blanket throw, baby blanket, or just spring decor throw um, in this, what is this called? Rainbow Rhapsody. Rainbow Rhapsody, colorway wild and free. So I started one and I'm loving it so far. This is a size one yarn, y'all. This is a size one and I'm using a 4.5 millimeter. I was going to use a five and then I thought, no, that might make the, the stitches too loosey goosey. And um, then I was like, well, maybe I'll use a four. Then I thought, well, the four... It's probably gonna, I'm gonna feel like it's taken forever. So I settled on 4.5, <laughs> long story short. So here's what I have so far. But aren't the color changes just gorgeous in this yarn? This yarn is a true ombre effect. And none of that, it's pink, then it's yellow. So I love how this yarn will take like the, um, see it had the pink, and then it's got the pink and yellow together, which kind of makes it look orangey, right? And then it goes, then it fades into just the yellow. And then next we'll have fade, the blue, the blue and yellow, then the blue, then the blue and like a hot pink. And then we got it mixing the pink with the black and then it ends in the black. And that's just, I love that. I love the way that this yarn changes colors. So I'm enjoying this. I think it's beautiful and it's given my wrist a workout, but um, hey, something's gotta. So then my brain got to thinking about how much I love Tunisian. I love Tunisian crochet, right? So this is that um, washcloth I showed y'all last time that I made with Tunisian crochet in, I think this is a 6.5 millimeter. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. You know, it's not marked, 
But um, so that's a 6.5 and then I have a five. So I know it wasn't the five, it was the 6.5. It's what I usually use for the cotton, um, you know, the kitchen cotton sugar and cream with Tunisian. If I'm doing the Tunisian knit stitch, I'm definitely using the 6.5. Um, if I did a um, simple or honeycomb or something like that, I would use the five. But the knit stitch makes such a tight, thick weave that you need that bigger hook to, so it'll lay right and flat and stuff. Anyway, that's just my opinion. What do I know, right? <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? Tunisian. So I was thinking about my love for Tunisian crochet. And so I decided I'm going to look up for and find a um, tutorial or something on the Tunisian granny stitch. Well, I didn't search too hard, but I did Google it and I searched it on YouTube and I could not find, I couldn't find anywhere where anybody did Tunisian granny stitch crochet, Tunisian crochet granny stitch. So I said, well, it couldn't be too hard. So I'm gonna try to figure it out myself. Now, granted, there probably is something out there, but I just haven't found it. So if you do know, let me know. Thanks. <laughs> I'll see if I'm doing it right. <laughs> um, so I was practicing and this is what I came up with for the Tunisian crochet granny stitch. Now I have this still attached to my yarn ball because I'm actually going to frog this, but I wanted to show it to y'all first um, because I figured out something better and you can see it's not like I didn't do it exactly right. This was just me testing. So this is what I came up with. And you can see it's, you know, it looks like the granny stitch where you got the three double crochets in a row and then you got a space, right? Granny stitch. So I did that and then I thought, well, how sloppy does that look? It kind of looks very sloppy. So I tried it on on um, some acrylic yarn. This is just cotton, sugar and wheel cotton. Sugar and wheel? No, no, Joanna. Sugar and cream cotton. <laughs> sugar wheel, sugar and wheel. <laughs> I'm losing it. This is sugar wheel cotton minis, and that is sugar and cream cotton. Why they gotta call it sugar and sugar? I don't know. So I started trying it on acrylic. Now I'm just using this, um, I love this yarn, Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn. Cause it was the closest skein to me, so I just grabbed it. So this is, um, so I started doing it in the acrylic yarn. So here we are, here's the acrylic granny stitch, Tunisian. I did this with the 6.5 um, millimeter. All of this is with the 6.5. If I were to use a six maybe or a 5.5, um, it wouldn't look, it would look better, I think. You know, it would have a tighter stitch because the double crochet in Tunisian is a very an elongated, you know, it's long and stringy. So a smaller hook would be better to do the, um, the double crochets in Tunisian. So we got that, and then I started looking at it. Let me see if I can point this out to y'all. Do you see this line right here? These like yarn overs? I got this yarn over right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. So these little yarn overs were bugging me. They were in my way. I thought it made it look sloppy. I didn't like how it was coming out. Am I holding this upside down? But anyway, so yeah, so there's the right side. Um, I think I was actually showing y'all the back of the project. <laughs> so yeah, so the these yarn overs were, were really getting to me. They were, I thought they made the work look very sloppy. So, I figured out a way to hide the yarn over. So let me make sure I'm showing y'all this in the right direction, not the back and not the other way. So here we go. Here's the final result 
of the Tunisian Granny Stitch where I hid the yarn overs. So now it actually looks like a Granny Stitch, doesn't it? It actually looks like one. So I was pretty proud of myself. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but um, it's not perfect, y'all. You know, um, you can see the edges aren't going to come out nice and smooth and clean. But you can fix that with a border, you know, if that's what you really wanted to do. Which most, most projects are bordered anyway, right? It's kind of like that icing on the cake, that little finishing touch when you put a border on something as that little something extra special. So that's what I came up with, the Tunisian granny. Now, I thought about maybe trying to do a little tutorial to show y'all, but I don't know if there's much interest in this or not. I wouldn't be able to like teach you how to Tunisian crochet because there's a bazillion videos for that anyway, if you wanted to learn Tunisian. But I thought if you already knew Tunisian, I could show you how to do the Tunisian granny. I think it goes this way. So let me know if there's any interest in that. I'd love to show y'all. Well, since I don't have really any finished projects to show y'all this, this video, um, it's all just little bits and bobs and things that, are, that I've been wanting to try and uh, practicing. And y'all know with this Tunisian um, granny, I did it and ripped it out so many times, you know, it takes time for all that. But, um, so let me show you another project I started on because I love the latte cake so much. And we actually only have like a month left of cold weather here. <laughs> so I better get busy on this <laughs> if I want to wear it this winter. <laughs> um, so I started working on a project with this. Karen Latte Cakes in Pepper Ash. I think that's what this is. Oh, I can't see that. Because it was upside down. Pepper Ash. So, um, of course, it's Tunisian. <laughs> it's just Tunisian knit stitch. I think that's my favorite look. I love the look of the Tunisian knit stitch. Because it reminds me of knit. And I can't knit. I love the look of the knit stitch. Um, so Tunisian is my way to get it. However I can. So with the latte cakes, I was looking at them like, I don't want to make another wearable with this because I already have a few, quite a few items, you know, the, um, the one ball shawls and the, the wristers and the, the, uh, divine hat, you know, with the, with the latte cakes. So, um, I said, well, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, because this is a thing with me, y'all. I have several lap blankets already in progress, probably for a year or two. And I get bored with a blanket and I don't want to make a blanket because it's boring doing the same thing over and over again for so long. That's why I like a quickie, right? Love a quickie. <laughs> All kinds. <laughs> anyway, so I said, well, if I'm going to make, if I'm going to try to make a lap blanket, a lap gan or whatever you want to call it with the latte cakes, that would be so scrumptious to just snuggle up in or give as a gift or something. Um, then I'm going to, then I'm going to, what size am I going to make the blanket? And I'm thinking, well, I don't like a little lap blanket. I like a long lap blanket that can cover your whole body and not just like half your body, you know? So I'm like, well, I'm gonna make it six feet long by four feet wide. That's almost like a twin size blanket. I'm not sure exactly what size a twin size blanket is, but it's pretty close, I think, to twin size now that I think about it. <laughs> but, um, so I'm gonna make it a nice long, kind of wide, you know, blanket where you get some coverage, right? And um, so I'm like, so I started my row. And I'm like, okay, four feet long. I did my chain four feet long. And I'm like, I'm never going to make this. 
I am never going to finish this blanket because I'm going to get bored with it just like the other ones. And so then I thought, well, maybe I should just start with the other measurement, the six foot long measurement, right? And then I can turn it into a scarf if I get bored with it. <laughs> so is it gonna be a scarf or a wrap perhaps, you know, a wider scarf and that way you could just be a wrap? Or is it gonna be a blanket? We don't know yet, do we? <laughs> right now, Right now it could actually be a scarf. So let me show you how wide it is right now. And that's the, um, that's just the knit stitch. There's the back. So you can kind of see the, the knits. I'm holding it sideways. So y'all probably want to see it this way. And here's the front where you just see the stripes, right? You see it's all wound up on my cord right here. But it is six feet long. And, oh, that's kind of cute, like a ruffle. <laughs> oh, wait, it's a clown collar. <laughs> anyway, it's really, y'all, this yarn is so scrumptious. Oh, I love it. Okay, anyway, um, so... Are we taking bets? It's going to be a scarf, a wrap, or a blanket by, by the time I get bored with it and call it quits. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so for this season of the Granny Challenge, cow, whatever it is, <laughs> um, that Krista and Glenda with, um, Krista with the Secret Yarnery and Glenda with Creative Grandma. <laughs> I drew a blank there for a sec. Um, I'll link their videos down below too, in case you haven't watched them about this season of the Granny Make Along, um, I think which ends March 18th is what they said. So I don't know if it's supposed to be like make all your granny stuff and then on March 18th show everybody or just do it until March 18th. I'm not sure, but, um, just have fun with it and go with the flow. That's what I say. <laughs> Um, so I want to tag some of my friends, even though I wasn't officially tagged. It was like an open-ended tag, you know, like from Krista. I think Granny D said she just wanted to tag everybody, you know. But it's always fun to mention a few names, and people love to hear their name. So, um, of course, I want to tag Nicole with Addicted to Yarn. I'm tagging Christy with Hooks and Horseshoes. I'm tagging Ruthie with Ruthie's Crochet Corner. I wanna tag um, Sharon with Sharon's Crochet Corner. I wanna tag, um, let's see, oh, Melissa with Sweet Melissa Makes and More. And I wanna tag um, Sarah with A Curious Cuttlefish. Tag, 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 you're it. Um, oh, you know what I wanna tag? I wanna tag two of my Aussie friends. And that is Allie with Miss Allie Makes. And I want to tag Karen Wright. Even though she doesn't have um, a channel, you know, she's always there for all of us. So I'm tagging you too, Karen. Let's see those grannies. You can send me a picture and email. I'd love to see it. <laughs> or post it on my page or whatever. Anyway, love you, girl. Um, let's tag, oh, my sweet cinnamon bun. Jennifer with cinnamon stitches, although I know she's already been tagged. I want to tag Petra with Petra's Happy Place. She my boo. And um, let's see, Sandy with Left is Right Crochet. Oh, I love Sandy, my love. I love her. And um, oh, there's so many of y'all. Let's just tag D again. Why not? <laughs> with Knit Pearl and Squirrel with Granny D and Madonna. Uh, and, oh, there's so many, so many. Cindy Hart's crochet. Oh, Carrie. Ha um, Carrie with happiness. Karen with happiness is homemade. And Carrie, the happy, crafty homemaker. So, yeah, there's a bunch right there, y'all. Let's get cracking on the grannies, yo. So, thanks, y'all, for sticking around for Joe's Web. 
number 40. 40 already, y'all. So um, be sweet and be kind and be blessed. And I'll see you next time.